the function f is defined by f of x equals 7x cubed. In the x plane, the graph of y equals g of x is the result of shifting the graph of y equals f of x down two units. Which function, excuse me, which equation defines function g? Man, they love their verbiage, don't they? <laughs> so much, so many words for a math test, right? Okay, 7x cubed. I am not drawing this to scale to use their words, but 7x cubed is going to be a cubic. Cubics are ones that go like this, or they can go up and down like that. A 7x cubed is going to be a cubic that goes right through the origin. It's going to be really, really steep, and it's decided it doesn't like my stylus. There we go. <laughs> it's, wow. Thanks. Thanks, Microsoft. I love your products so much. Uh, there we go. Okay, so it's going to be very steep. I'm not quite drawing it steep enough. So it's 7x cubed is a steep cubic that's going through the center. Now they're saying there's another function, g of x. And g of x is the result of shifting the graph of y equals f of x down two units. So g of x is going to be this whole graph just moved down two. It's going to look identical, which I clearly am incapable of doing. Let me see if I can select that. Ooh, I can be all fancy. Look at me. Look at there. All right. So there we have it. That would be g of x. <laughs> so this top one is going to be f of x. And again, I'm not great at drawing these, but and this one shifted down to would be g of x. Now they're asking, what's the equation for g of x? There's a whole set of uh, rules and patterns that you can memorize for how functions move when you add constants. Those are plain numbers to them. For example, if I have, and I'm going to scoot down here, kind of give you a, a quick run through on this. Because if you have, let's say this is x squared. If I say x squared minus 2, what that does is it moves it down 2 on the y-axis. Okay? If it is inside a parentheses with that x, x minus 2 squared, if that, that constant is inside there with the x, it moves it left or right, and it moves it the opposite of what it is. As we just saw with the x squared minus 2, that moved it down to, it was direct, minus 2 on the y. This one, it's the opposite. So instead of going towards the negative x, it actually goes towards the positive x. So that minus 2 in there is going to move it 2 to the right, and it's going to go up there. So those are the most common. There's a lot of them. There's if you put a number out here, if you put a negative, if you put a negative, it flips it. If you put a, a number that's greater than one, it makes it more steep. If you put a fraction, it makes it wider. Those are the most common ones that you see. So if I had something, let's say it was like x minus three squared plus one, then I would say, oh, okay, this minus three, it's moving it on the x and it's gonna move it the opposite. So it goes one, two, three towards the positive x. And then this plus one, it moves it directly. It's gonna move it up one. So it would be up here, same graph. It's just moved over. So those are the principles and they apply whether it is a x squared, x cubed, like I'm trying to think of an exception, but the vast majority of the functions that you deal with, this is the pattern you're going to see. I know there's exceptions out there. I'm sure there are, there's always exceptions but that's what you're most likely to see on this SAT. So here in this case, we have an X cubed or a seven X cubed, and it is moving down two. So that is a Y change. That means it's gonna be outside. It's not gonna be like an X and then a parentheses thing that would move it left or right along the X axis. So it's gonna be on the outside, it's moving down two or minus two. So 7x cubed minus 2, or D, is my answer. Now, if you get on the test and you do not remember this, you can just sort of plug and play. You can put numbers in there. So I would look right here, that point zero, 0, and go, okay, if it moves 2 units down, it's going to be at 0, negative 2. So I would look at my answers and go, okay, which one of these, if I plug 0 in for x, Will I get negative two after I do that math? And again, it's gonna get you that answer D. So I plug in zero there for X, I will get seven times zero or zero minus two 
is negative 2. D is my answer. If this was helpful or useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.